This is Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah, and in this Unity tutorial, we will dive headfirst once again into the world of game creation by programming in C Sharp a simple shooting enemy. Basically, we have a moving player represented by this prototype blue circle and this simple red square that will act as our enemy. As you can see, the square moves towards the player and then stops a certain distance away. If I move my character towards him, he will retreat in the opposite direction. The nasty little square also shoots these simple red bullets at our innocent blue circle. Now I'm using 2D assets for this tutorial, but everything shown can of course be applied for 3D. With all of that said, let's begin! So I have a fresh scene opened up, with my blue player character moving around it. I will definitely, in the near future, make a tutorial on exactly how to do this. But in the meantime, I'm going to disrupt this piece by placing in the scene my red square. I'll name this newly created object, Enemy. Obviously, he doesn't do anything for now. To bring him to life, let's create a C-sharp script I'll also name Enemy and open it up inside of Mono Develop. We can now begin writing the few easy lines of code that will get our enemy feeling dangerous and alive. I'll start by creating a bunch of variables. Firstly, I'll make a public variable of type float called speed. We will be using this to tweak how fast our enemy moves around the scene. Next up, I'll create another float variable, this one named stopping distance. The higher this number, the further away our enemy will stop from the player. I'll then copy and paste that line and replace the name with retreat distance. We will use this variable to measure when the enemy should back away from his target. Lastly, I'll make a variable of type transform called player and in my start function, set this player variable equal to the position of the object that has a tag named player. So let's head back to Unity and make sure our player character has the player tag on it. Awesome! We will now create an if statement inside our update function. This if statement will check how far our player is from the enemy. We can check the distance between these two characters by typing in vector2.distance. Inside the parentheses, we will put our enemy's position as well as the player's position. So if the distance between these two objects is greater than the value of our stopping distance variable, then we want our enemy to move towards the player. Doing this is very easy. All we have to do is move the enemy's current position towards the player by using vector2.move towards. So inside the parentheses, we will type in our enemy's position and the player's position, as well as the speed at which we want our enemy to move towards that position. We will then multiply speed with time.delta time to make sure that faster, more performance computers don't have faster moving enemies. If you want a more detailed explanation of this specific line of code, definitely check out the tutorial I did a few days ago on the topic. Let's continue by typing else if and check whether our enemy is near enough to stop moving towards his target. We will copy paste the vector2.distance piece of code and instead of checking whether the distance separating the two characters is greater than the stopping distance, we will check whether the distance is smaller. But we won't stop there, we'll also make sure that the enemy isn't too near the player by copying and pasting once again vector2.distance and replacing the stopping distance variable with the retreat distance. If these two conditions are met, then we want our enemy to simply stop moving by setting his position to his current position over and over again. So to recap, if the enemy is too far away, he will move closer to his target, but if he is near enough but not too near, 
he will simply stop moving. However, if he is too near the player, this cowardly enemy will wish to back away. To do so, we will create a last else if statement and check if the distance separating the player and the enemy is smaller than the value of our retreat distance variable. If it is, then we will copy and paste the vector2.move towards line of code and simply add a minus sign to our speed. Back in Unity, I will select my enemy and set the stopping distance to something like 20 and the retreat distance to 10. If we press play, you will see that our enemy now responds to our player, moving towards him or away from him, depending on how far away he is. Excellent, we are making really great progress. It's now time to get the shooting working. I'll create a private float variable called time between shots and a seconds float variable named start time between shots. This may be a little confusing, but all will become clear in just a moment. Finally, I'll make a public variable of type game object called projectile. We will place our enemy's projectile inside this empty slot in the inspector. Let's begin by setting time between shots equal to start time between shots. In my update function, I will then create an if statement and check whether time between shots is less or equal to zero. If it isn't, we will slowly decrease the number by typing in time between shots minus equal time dot delta time. Basically, if we set time between shots equal to two, it will take two seconds before it's equal to zero. So if it is less or equal to zero, we want our enemy to spawn a projectile. Doing so is super easy. All we need to do is type in instantiate and inside the parentheses, state what we wish to instantiate. In other words, spawn and at what position and rotation. I want to instantiate my projectile at the enemy's current position. For the rotation, I'll type in quaternion.identity, which basically means no rotation. Right underneath this line of code, I will set time between shots equal to start time between shots. Now this is very important. If we don't do this, our enemy will shoot every single frame. In other words, something close to 60 times a second. Now you can also see why we made this start time between shots variable. To keep things clean and flexible, so we don't have to hard code a value, but instead tweak it in the inspector, which we will do right now. I'll want my enemy shooting a projectile every two seconds. I also need to drag and drop the projectile inside of this empty slot, but I currently don't have any. So I'll go inside my sprites folder and place inside the scene this very basic red circle I created in Photoshop. I'll call it projectile. Let's then make a prefabs folder and drag and drop this newly created object inside of that folder. I'll delete it from our scene and place the prefab in my enemy's projectile slot. It's now time to hit play. As you can see, the enemy spawned projectiles, but they don't move, which is totally normal. We need to create a second script that will handle the projectile's movement. So let's do just that. I'll name it projectile, open it up and begin by adding the usual float speed variable. I'll also create a variable of type transform called player and a vector2 variable named target. In the start function, I will set the player variable equal to the game object in our scene that has a tag called player, and more precisely, the transform of that object. Basically the exact same thing we did a few minutes ago. I'll then set the vector to target variable equal to my player's x and y coordinates. So basically the target variable is equal to the position of our player when the projectile is spawned. 
it will not change values. In the update function, I'll make the project tile move towards that fixed position using the usual vector 2move towards. So to recap, the project tile is spawned, it registers the player's position, and it stubbornly moves towards that position regardless if the player is there or not. If we wanted a project tile that follows the player, we would simply move towards the player's position instead of the target's position. To finish up, we'll check if the project tile has reached its destination. If it has, then we will call a function called destroy project tile. Let's create that function under update and inside it simply type in destroy game object. We also want our project tile to destroy itself if it contacts the player. To do so, we will create a void on trigger enter 2D function that takes in a collider 2D I'll call other. We will check if what the project tile has hit is well the player by using other.compare tag player. And if it is, we will call our destroy project tile function. Before pressing play, I'll make sure my player has a rigid body 2D attached to it as well has some 2D collider. I'll also add a 2D circle collider to my project tile and set it to trigger. Your objects really need these components or they won't register whether they have collided with each other or not. Of course, don't forget to set the speed of your project tile. I'll set mine to 20. Pressing play, we will find ourselves facing a vicious shooting enemy. Awesome. Of course, you can make the shot have more impact by adding some screen shake or spawning some particles using instantiate when the projectile is destroyed. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Of course, if there is something you don't quite understand or you're stuck, post away in the comment section down below and I will answer the fastest possible. Alright, thanks so much for watching. Definitely stay tuned, loads of exciting content is being planned and don't forget to make the simple but to me golden act of hitting the like and subscribe buttons. Okay, cheers!